Hi, I'm Leslie Grinnell, and I'm the owner of Eddie's Wheels. We've been making wheelchairs for 30 years now, and um, I've been asked by Angela Griffiths to talk to you about how to integrate dog wheelchairs into a rehab program or a maintenance program for dogs with mobility issues, uh, neurologic issues, whatever. Uh, so what differentiates Eddie's Wheels from everybody else's cart? is the fact that uh, the cart is designed by a mechanical engineer who looked at the canine skeleton and said, what can I, how can I support a dog on its skeleton in such a way as to do no harm and to promote healing? And so he looked at the uh, skeleton of a, of a dog and said, I'm going to create a saddle that mirrors the shape and angle of a dog's pelvis. The cart, the yoke, would sit on the dog's scapula. Uh, because all the carts up until then had a girth strap that encircled the spine, it made no sense to us that a dog with a spinal cord injury would carry the weight of the cart around its back, around its spinal cord. So the yoke should sit on the scapula right above the withers, and the saddle uh, should fit and, and uh, be shaped just like a dog's pelvis. And the shape of that pelvis is very much determined by um, the numbers of the dog's measurements. The C and E measurements provide us with the information we need to come up with the saddle that in fact looks just like the pelvis of the dog that it's carrying. This cart was for a dachshund. We call it our CD1 cart. It's um, actually the most common size cart we make for dachshunds. It's the simplest cart we make. Um, it has little rolling stirrups that you can use to elevate the dog's feet. Uh, and there's a little tongue weight. The wheels are set back because we expect dachshunds to be very um, active little dogs. They only have one speed, fast. So the tongue weight on the shoulders keeps the cart much more stable. This is the style of cart that we recommend for our dogs with normal front leg strength who are usually younger. Um, that will not, we don't expect them to have any arthritic changes and no issues in the cervical spine. If there are issues in the cervical spine, we can make a balanced cart. But this is where we started from, the standard rear wheel cart. The cart opens like a door. So you pull out the pull pins, set it on the ground, put the dog on its front legs, set their legs into the saddle, raise the cart up over them, put the pull pins back in, and buckle the chest strap, which is right here. And the chest strap should be loose. This is a belly strap for long back dogs to just support that TL junction or wherever that injury might be. This can be moved wherever it's necessary to promote the best movement with the back legs. We always put dogs in a normal healthy stance, fully weight bearing. So you want to uh, measure dogs with their feet flat on the ground. Um, if dogs need to have their feet um, taken off the ground, you can use stirrups. If they have ability to move with their legs but have a tendency to knuckle, you can use booties to protect their feet. We find that dogs who are IBD dogs will generally uh, drag their feet on smooth surfaces, but if you aggravate the deep pain response and the reflexes, they might pick their feet up. And this is, in fact, what happened over and over again with many of the disc dogs that we have worked with over the years. So this card is a very fine rehabilitation tool in terms of trying to get these dogs into being spinal walkers again. Eddie's Wheels is unique in the world for balancing carts. This is Finch's cart, and, and this is Finch. Finch is my chihuahua. He's two years old. He came here a year ago, weighing four pounds. Now we have him up to six pounds, a little more than six pounds. He had a broken back. We don't know how that happened. Uh, he's deep pain negative, but he does have reflexes. But when we got him at four pounds, his elbows were luxating, and he was very skinny. His adult coat hadn't grown in yet. And we wanted to make him a cart that would be weightless on his shoulders. So we engineered what we call a neutral balance cart. You can see that the wheels of this cart are moved forward. The center of the wheel is, in fact, 
uh, even with the front of the saddle. So the weight of his rump behind the wheels um, makes the cart rise over his shoulder blades, and this support strap is what keeps the yoke in place so that um, it's, uh, the cart is level without putting any additional pressure on its front legs. Uh, if you're wondering what this is, this is his uh, invisible fence collar because Finch is so fast in his cart that I cannot trust him in the yard. So <laughs> that being said, I'm going to put him in it just to show you um, how you adjust a cart. That's a neutral balanced cart. You undo the support strap. Whoops. You tip the dog up on his front legs. Close the yoke. Unbuckle the chest strap. So you can see, if I undo all the Velcro, that the yoke has a tendency to fly up over his shoulders. So you take your Velcro strap and you want to get it as close to his armpits as possible. That's what this little shaft collar is there for. And put your fingers on his scapula and then tighten the support strap so that the yoke sits on your fingers. That makes it weightless on his shoulders. And buckle the chest strap. There should be enough slack so that he can stretch out as he's moving. Because in fact, as he's moving in the cart, because the saddle is welded and stays in one place, we're creating traction on his spine. And Finch has gotten an inch and a half longer since he got his wheelchair. He used to have a little peak in the middle of his back, and that's pretty much gone. So this is also one of the ways that Eddie's Wheels carts help dogs with IBDD rehabilitate. The whole effect of traction is uh, intrinsic to the cart, and we see this time and time again with do disc dogs and dogs with broken backs also. Finch also has uh, reflexes. You can see him kick. He's got a very strong withdrawal response, but uh, generally he does not use his legs that much, so he has the option of putting his feet in stirrups. And it's hoped that with more rehab, we'll be able to strengthen his legs so that eventually he may become a spinal walker. So there you go. Good job, Finch. About half of our business is dogs with progressive neurological illnesses, uh, degenerative myelopathy, pug myelopathy. Um, so we have come up with a way to uh, provide these dogs with a progressive uh, cart that they can adjust in order to match the dog's weakness or strength. This is called a variable axle. It's a big long axle with lots of holes in it. So each one of these holes is a place where you can screw the wheels in. And depending on where the wheel is screwed in, into, the balance of the cart changes. So basically, it's seesaw technology. The more weight behind the wheels, the more lift in the front end. So here we are. We have a cart that is basically set at neutral. The center of the wheel is even with the center of the saddle. And the cart, with a little bit of weight, is perfectly balanced and doesn't want to doesn't want to fall down, doesn't want to rise up, it just sits there. So we're seeing a lot of pugs um, with what they call pug myelopathy. This was a pug cart. And um, so what we're finding with pugs is that their ataxia starts in their late middle age, very much like dogs with degenerative myelopathy. It starts out with ataxia and knuckling. And then as, the, uh, as they get older, um, their issues become more involved. Um, so we see a lot of arthritic changes in these older pugs, and we don't want to load their front ends unnecessarily. We want to give them the best quality of life for as long as possible. 
So um, this is what we recommend for dogs with pug myelopathy and degenerative myelopathy. So how do you change the balance of the cart? You simply unscrew the set screw and you move, unscrew the axle bolt and you move the wheels forward. As you move the wheels forward, a percentage of weight is removed from the front end. This support strap turns into a sling that lifts weight off the dog's forelimbs. So at the end of the axle, you've got 30% of the weight behind the wheels and 30% of the weight that was normally borne on the front end relieved. So we can keep these dogs with DM and pug myelopathy going in a two-wheeled cart for a, a lot longer than they would go in a simple two-wheeled standard cart. Uh, we started this out by making upgrades, but we came to realize that, first of all, most people don't have the mechanical skills to change their axles. So this way, you make the decision once. You're going to see this dog through to the end of the disease or not, depending on there are other health issues. Um, so um, I always counsel people when we're talking about what style of cart, I ask them if they are willing to deal with incontinence because that's part and parcel of dealing with a progressive neurologic disorder. I give counseling on bladder expression and, and bladder health. I give them handy tricks because I've been living with disabled incontinent dogs for a very long time. So I think I've got most of those tricks down. So. This is uh, the variable axle cart. And just as when I put Vinch in the cart, you just take the neoprene cover off the first time, undo the support strap, and that's the way you adjust um, the position of the yoke relative to the dog's body. The last thing you want to see is the dog cart at an angle and the chest strap choking them at the throat. It's a common mistake that people make. They forget to adjust the support strap. The support strap is a sling. Use it that way. So there you go. So then there are always going to be a few dogs and owners who are um, more than happy to stay, no matter what their disability is. They're well-loved, and they lead interesting lives. But it, when it gets to the point where they're knuckling in the front end and starting to fall down and the counterbalance is not sufficient, we can add detachable front wheels. So if your clients are thinking that they would get four wheels for their cart, these detachable front wheels can be added to any cart as long as it has the appropriate hardware. And you can ask your client beforehand if they're interested in getting a front attachment when the time comes and we can put the appropriate hardware right onto the cart when we're building it so they don't have to change any parts. And the front end pops right on and off and attaches to the front yoke block. That is a special block with an extra hole and um, a little guide that you use to align the block with the bracket. attaches with a pull pin, and then you just screw in the uh, big screw. So it's very simple and it's inexpensive. Um, we do make full quad carts. Um, I suggest you take a look at them on our website. I, um, we also make a clinic quad that's adjustable for rehab centers that specialize in large breed dogs. Uh, our clinic quad and quad carts can be used both as hospice and as rehab carts. Um, we've been using uh, this style with the outrigger for dogs with balance issues, dogs with cerebellar hypoplasia and cerebellar abutrophy. Uh, some of our clients have opted for full quad carts for those disabilities. Um, they both work great. It's a matter of price and, um, and, and weight. This is the lighter option. So for smaller dogs, we tend to recommend this. So um, this is a really big cart. Uh, our size limitation is 200 pounds. We make carts for Mastiffs and giant breed dogs. Uh, and we ship all our carts fully assembled. So sometimes the shipping expense can be really prohibitive. So we had to come up with uh, a way of making the delivery of these carts affordable. So one of the ways we can do that is what we call the hinge. 
and this allows the cart to fold in half and fit into a smaller box. Uh, it also allows the cart to fold in half in someone's home or in their car for transportation and for just fitting more nicely into someone's life and uh, size limitations, space limitations. This cart is also bushed here and here, so we could have potentially disassemble the vertical rods and the axle so that the owner can reassemble the entire cart and it can fit into an even smaller box. I want to show the stirrups that we use on large carts. These are the hanging stirrups. They're adjustable for length. We recommend that the uh, stirrups be used capturing the dog here uh, with the paws touching the rear crossbar to give them some feedback. There's no reason to hike up the back end of the cart, back legs of the dog any higher than that. Um, sometimes we have um, a need for an additional belly strap, particularly in end-stage DM dogs where they're losing core, so we can add another belly strap. Sometimes we have dogs with rigid rear legs um, and the legs will not fit into a normal stirrup. So for those dogs, we have this stirrup. Um, this material is called silly foam and you can wrap it around the dog's leg and Velcro it in place and capture the leg in such a way so that it will not ride up. And you can place this stirrup anywhere you want. It can hang off the back end or if the dog's legs don't want to bend backwards, you can suspend them from the side rails of the cart and suspend the legs underneath the dog's tummy. So we keep trying to come up with ways to make it all work for all kinds of different disabilities in dogs. Uh, we also have custom bolsters because dogs will waste at the end stages of their lives. So we make um, cushions that can fit into the saddle here right in the front and straighten dogs out who are leaning too hard one way or the other. Uh, we have custom bolsters for dogs who have atrophied in the rear and have no longer a tight fit in the saddle. Um, Talk to us about what your needs are, and we might have to invent something for you, but we're happy to give it a try. So the next thing I want to do is talk to you about uh, measuring and assessing dogs for wheelchairs. Uh, this is our measurement chart, and um, for a rear wheel cart, we're only going to do measurements A through E, and of those measurements, the only two that are not adjustable are C and E, so those are the two that you want to um, um, be precise about. The other thing you need to wear, bear in mind though is that C gives you the size of the saddle hole and E gives you the width of the dog. So you need to think a little bit about this. This is, there's a little art to C and E. Uh, if a dog has got, got use of his back legs, if he has degenerated myelopathy, you want to make the C measurement um, you want to give it a little bit of slack so that he has room for range of motion. We will build in more what we consider the right slack, but you don't want to go tight to the skin, okay? And if he's got a lot of fluff and fluff is a dimension, then you want to go halfway through the fur and include that fluff in your dimension. Same with E. Um, and we have a tool, a caliper, that we are happy to provide to you uh, along with a metal tape measure. You are not to use a cloth tape because a metal tape measure won't give us straight line measurements. And every single one of these measurements um, is a part of the cart. So the A measurement, which is to the top of the scapula, tells in relationship with the D measurement, gives the proportion between the pelvic floor and the scapula, and that creates the uh, arch of the yoke. And the B measurement tells us how long the side rails have to be. And if we're engineering a cart, that is a mathematical equation that needs to be accurate. So rather, um, if you're going to err, err on the side of a little too long than too short. Um, and if you're going to err uh, for the E measurements, you want to leave a little bit of space so that dogs can pant and breathe and maybe eat too much at Christmas. So. <laughs> 
Um, we, we make a pro pack, which we are very happy to send out to uh, rehab professionals and veterinarians. Um, it has a, an assessment guide, which is all of the questions that we ask. Um, when we're looking at a dog for the first time, we want to know his age and his weight and his breed. We want to know if he had um, a disc problem, what discs were involved. We want to know if any cervical discs were involved that we need to protect against. We would never put a cervical dog in a standard cart, so we want to know about those issues. For DM dogs, we want to know when they first noticed the onset of the disease, the toenail scraping on the sidewalk. Typically, it's six to nine months when they're ready to get a wheelchair from the time they first saw symptoms. Uh, we want to know what diagnostics have be, been done um, and what treatments they might be involved in. We're getting dogs who are getting stem cell treatments. So this is interesting information for us, and we kind of think of ourselves as a clearinghouse for that kind of information so that we can share that with our clients. Um, we also have a little cheat sheet for you. Uh, which gives you standard proportions, and this is oops, this is um, the proportions that we have noticed uh, from measuring a few thousand dogs. Um, there are mathematical uh, equations that seem to uh, more or less work. So if you get uh, measurements that don't fit these guidelines, go back and double check. The dog might have been, had a roached back, and the B measurement might be too short. Uh, the dog might have been too stretched out, and the B measurement might be too long. Someone who was holding the dog may have been lifting the dog's hind end and fully extending the rear legs without paying attention to a level top line. You want to start with a level top line and go from there. So, um, so these are just little crib sheets for you to double check your measurements while your client is there, so you can go back and double check them. We also offer to meet with you by FaceTime or by email while your client is there and review your measurements so that you don't have to have them come back and re-measure. So as with all things custom, we want to do it right the first time. So this is uh, how we measure dogs. This is Finch and he's got no strength at all on his back legs. So the important thing is to get your team together, someone at the front of the dog to bait him with treats, and someone holding him at the hips to keep him standing with a level top line. And it's your job as the measurer to make sure that top line is level. So I'm going to reposition his legs right here. I'll say, Finch, stand up right there and there. Good boy. Good boy. Keep it right there. So A, the A measurement is to the top of the withers. So we're going to take our tape measure, put your hand at the top of the withers, and it should be around 9 inches. Then for the B measurement, you're going to go from the center of the shoulder to the front of the rear leg, and that is about 6 inches on inch. When you get to C, I'm going to come around here. And Victoria, you can move your hand so you can show the full upper thigh. I'm going to move his diaper out of the way so you can see. You want to get the drumstick. <laughs> Thanks, Finch, for showing us your excellent reflexes. So that's like two and a quarter inches. And then for the D measurement, you want to make sure his top line is level, his feet flat on the ground, and measure to his pelvic floor, and his feet flat on the ground, feet are flat, we're getting six inches, and that happens to be two-thirds of nine, so that's the right proportion. And then for the E measurements, you take your caliper, and you don't want them to be too tight. Right now, there's no wiggle room, see? So you want to back off the caliper a little bit so that you have about a centimeter between the caliper and the dog's skin. And I happen to know that Finch is four and three quarter inches wide. And that's what I'm getting, four and three quarter inches. Then the widest part 
on Finch at his rib cage is right behind his shoulder blades, and that's the same. And then at the hips, you want to put your hand between his legs, Victoria. There you go. And you want to include the musculature of the upper thigh. And four and three quarters is way too wide. So we bring that in. And we're getting four and a quarter. And that is what Finch measures. So I just want to show you how that relates to his cart. If you look at his cart, if you measure between the blocks, it's four and three quarters. The B measurement, which would be from the front of the saddle to the yoke, is six inches. The height to the bottom of the yoke is nine inches. And the height to the top of the center of the saddle is six inches. So every part of this cart is a direct relationship to the measurements that we took on him. And that's why it fits so beautifully. So the last piece is um, taking the measurement confirmation photo. So all we need is to make sure that the dog is in a healthy, normal stance, feet flat on his ground, and the tape measure held in such a way so that the measurement that we see for A is in fact the number you gave us. A is nine. And it should be taken straight on in profile so that we're seeing it as as you saw it when you took the measurements. Not overhead, not from below, straight on, square to the dog. So now we're gonna put Finch in his cart so you can see how well it all fits. So as I said before, Finch has gotten an inch and a half longer. This is actually his second cart. His scapula is right about here when he's stretching out, but when he's standing straight, he's right there. And if you look, his feet are flat on the ground when he's standing up straight. So that when he is on abrasive surfaces, his reflexes are triggered and he does move his legs when he's on gravel and pavement. And he can even wag sometimes. <laughs> there you go. So that covers rear wheel carts. Um, we also make front wheel carts, uh, but that would be another s webinar. This is Webster, who's head of our front wheel cart division. There are additional measurements needed for front wheel carts and quads. I'd be happy to do another webinar about front wheelers for both dogs with uh, congenital malformations and front leg amputations. Um, all of our information is available on our website, eddieswheels.com. My email is leslie at eddieswheels. Uh, feel free to email me with your questions. Also, we have a very active Facebook page with all the good news of what's going on with dogs with disabilities. Thanks.